Last week, we covered top chip stocks for 2024. Today, we're going to talk about our top seven non-chip stocks for 2024. But first, let's briefly touch on a news item that surfaced this week about the possible acquisition of ANSYS by uh, one of our favorite EDA companies, Synopsys. Yeah, very interesting news here. But briefly, what is ANSYS exactly? Have you heard of NVIDIA's digital twin software that helps create a digital version of a place or a project for use in design and simulation? Well, ANSYS does something similar to this digital twin concept, but with smaller systems and products. It's a leader in engineering and physics simulation. Its suite of tools allows engineers to build a digital prototype of something and see how it might act or behave in the real world before sending it on to the manufacturing line. Of course, this saves time, money, resources, and so on, leads to better performing products. So the question is, will Synopsys acquire ANSYS? We don't know. ANSYS is currently worth around $31 billion in market cap and Synopsys worth $80 billion in market cap. So it could work if it was a mostly or all stock deal. We won't make any statements regarding this until we have a confirmed press release from these companies, along with some official deal details. If you want to know more about companies like Synopsys and Ansys and where these EDA-style companies fit into the semiconductor industry flow, make sure you check out our semiconductor industry flow manual that we have linked below in the description. It's for sale in our Kofi shop. You can also check out our video on the semiconductor industry, which we will link here and also in our description as well. Now, let's jump into our seven top non-chip stocks for 2024. Yeah, we wanted to do this to close out 2024 because the top question that we tend to get, other than what do we think about super micro computer stock, SMCI, is what is our full portfolio? So maybe for all of the new subscribers there, we actually have talked about, I think, just about every single stock in our portfolio over the course of the last year. The reason why we don't do a full, simple chart or table of our stock positions is that's not the purpose of our channel. Our our idea here was to be a springboard for your own research, to help you start to build your own framework when selecting stocks so that you can go on to build your own portfolio that is reflective of who you are and where you are in your investment journey, not a portfolio that's reflective of who Casey and I are. And so we tend to find if we just simply provide you a list of our stocks we invest in, it gets copycatted, it gets imitated, and that's not what we wanna do. We do wanna talk about what we own and explain why, but we want to add some nuance to the discussion. With that said, top non-chip stocks to kick off 2024. These are companies that we have recently added to or plan on adding more of to our portfolio in, let's say, the first quarter of 2024. The best stock to buy is one you already own. The statement made by fund manager Peter Lynch. And all of these stocks that we are going to cover today in our top non-chip stocks for 2024 are stocks that we already have in our portfolio. And you'll notice a common theme among these stocks For the big, large caps, they're well-diversified platform businesses, or they're quickly building themselves into a platform, which means other businesses build on top of them. And the other smaller businesses that we have here are focused on a niche before expanding outward. That's right. So our friend Travis Hawaiian on Asymmetric Investing has been talking about this concept all year. This is a concept called the Smiling Curve Economic model that the internet has really kind of helped create big platforms on the right, small niche players on the left, and focusing on these two type of businesses with your investment strategy is basically a type of barbell investment strategy. So in addition to this, Casey, all of these names that we're going to talk about are growing, yes, but they also have an established track record of raising profit margins over time, with the exception of maybe one a certain lithium refiner that we'll talk about, or all of these companies are well on their way towards establishing the sort of expanding profit margin 
track record. So that's a common theme you often see with all of the stocks that we talk about and that we are interested in investing in chip stock or otherwise. So let's kick it off with our first super boring non-chip stock to kick off 2024. First stock is Amazon or AMZN. Of course, this company does not need a lot of introduction. It focuses on e-commerce, cloud computing, digital streaming, and artificial intelligence. Amazon is one of the most valuable companies in the world. Is it too late to invest in Amazon? Many would possibly argue that this company won't return the same gains that a smaller cap would. Why are we investing in Amazon for the first quarter of 2024? Right. So Casey, this is one that we actually started investing in again in the past year and a quarter. And we do like some other e-commerce stocks a lot more for the long term, like Shopify. These companies like Shopify are also a bit of a more of a reflection of what we kind of personally believe what commerce should look like. At any rate, Amazon, we think, is a, a solid investment as it's really been focused on right-sizing its operations in the last year after overexpanding during the pandemic. And in two particular areas, it's been right-sizing. First, it's fulfillment centers. It's distribution and supply chain. It, it overexpanded those warehouses in 2020 through 2022. It's been scaling that back and figuring out how to get its core e-commerce business profitable again. It turned the corner on that this year. It's North America e-commerce business now turning a low single digit operating profit margin. It's international segment still in the red, but we think they'll continue to make good progress on that in 2024. The North America e-commerce business will continue to raise the bar. And we think that'll happen primarily through things like advertising, as you said, Casey, digital TV streaming, and third-party merchant services, sort of emulating a little bit the model of Shopify, building a set of tools for other merchants to build their own e-commerce business atop of the Amazon platform. And then the second place they've been right-sizing is their data centers for AWS, Amazon Web Services. That's been what's paid the bills for much of the last 10 years or so for Amazon. But we think AWS will get back over the 30% operating profit margin milestone again in 2024 and continue ratcheting higher. So of course, AWS, not the fastest growing cloud infrastructure business anymore, but that's plenty okay. We think Amazon will be a low teens revenue growth business in 2024 and have expanding profit margins. So we think this could have small cap stock-like performance in the year ahead. Number two, Salesforce, ticker symbol CRM, American cloud-based software company that specializes in customer relationship management. It's one of the largest software companies and cloud computing companies in the world. Nick, why are we continuing to invest in Salesforce in the first half of 2024? This is one of our, personally, one of our oldest cloud software holdings in our portfolio. And Casey, I think a lot of new investors got acquainted with building an investment thesis in 2021, 2022, and the bear market really kind of colored their perception of a lot of businesses. And I think there was this perception that Mark Benioff, co-founder and longtime CEO of the company, does not know how to build profitable businesses. And there were mistakes made, for sure. The company went on an acquisition spree. Slack was acquired one of the biggest software acquisitions ever. And to be sure, they got a little acquisition crazy there. But if you actually roll back the clock and take a look at Salesforce prior to the pandemic overspending spree, you actually see this company does have a really, really good track record of free cash flow per share. Very key metric here because it, it takes into account issuance of new stock and also gap earnings per share growth over time. 2023 was the year Salesforce reminded everybody, yes, we do in fact know how to build a profitable business. They've gotten back on track again. The company not as fast growing as it has been in the past, but we think there's potential for revenue growth to make a bit of a resurgence again, maybe tick up from the roughly 10% year-over-year -year growth rate they've been notching. And more importantly, again, profit margin expansion. We think Salesforce will continue to rapidly ratchet up 
profit margins. Again, maybe not all that exciting of a cloud stock. There are some really high growth, exciting names out there, but we think there's still lots of upside for companies like Salesforce that focus on not just growth, but profitable growth, share buybacks, and so on. One of those exciting names that Nick is speaking about is a company like ServiceNow, ticker symbol N-O-W. We've talked about this company in a few articles and a video or two. We will have more to say on this company going forward. For now, we like Salesforce. Let's move on to our number three, Airbnb slash booking holdings. Two more businesses that probably don't need much in the way of introduction. Casey, this is a bit of a two, two, four here. We think these two stocks will be highly correlated to each other going forward. The two dominant forces in vacation rentals, experiences, and of course, booking has the additional rental car business, flights, and other travel booking services. But these are two platform businesses supporting what we think is a new secular growth trend, not just moving travel booking to online, which is what really got booking to where it is today, but this new secular growth trend where younger generations are really focused on experiences, not just accumulating stuff, buying houses, filling those houses up with things and with toys, but we think a lot of younger generations value experiences as much as they do buying things. So that's why we think Airbnb slash booking holdings, whichever you want to pick. Again, we think the two stocks will be highly correlated to each other. We think we'll continue to do very well in 2024 and beyond. Our personal pick is Airbnb, but booking holdings we think is a pretty solid pick as well. Why Airbnb, Casey? Yeah, a couple of points that CEO Brian Chesky mentioned in their most recent earnings call when asked about their path forward, what their plans are in the future. He said that they've really benefited by being focused, but he thinks that Airbnb is now getting ready to re-expand beyond its core of these home listings and experiences. He points out that it was always part of the plan to do more than just short-term housing for travelers. And so they're attempting to make Airbnb more of a platform business, as Nick mentioned. Yeah, maybe 2024 is the year something like rental cars gets added to the Airbnb marketplace. We'll see, but whatever they have in store, we do think the company is highly motivated to reignite the growth engine. And of course, those profit margins continuing to expand. We think there's good stuff in store for Airbnb over the long term. We've done one other video comparing Airbnb and booking holding. Let us know in the comments if you want more content like this on these two stocks. Let's move on to number four, one of my favorites on running or O-N-O-N. This company started out as shoes for runners and has developed into much more than that with apparel and various sports shoes. They have a lot of professional athletes now running with on shoes. They're the most comfortable shoes on the planet, I can assure you. And repeat customers become loyal fans, as I have. So uh, as far as my take goes, I don't have a pair of on running shoes or tennis shoes or, or whatever yet. Casey, maybe, maybe I'll join you as one of those loyal fans in 2024. What I like about the company as you've continued to drip on me about this one, is the financial story, again, not just a sales growth story, which is impressive. And it looks like they have plenty of room to expand because they're really not available in all that many countries yet, still entering lots of new markets. But as they're doing so, it looks like they are establishing a pretty solid track record, again, of at least hitting break even very quickly as they enter these new markets. So we think after the company's last investor presentation in, I think it was November, 2023, they're really committed to sustaining at least gap, generally accepted accounting principle profitability over the next three years. That's difficult to do for a growing brand like this because you're continuously having to purchase new inventory to fuel your expansion into new markets. They've done a good job of that. And it looks like they're dedicated to continuing that track record, but also on an adjusted EBITDA basis, earnings before interest tax, depreciation, and amortization. 
expanding from about a 15% margin to about 18% plus by 2026. So about one percentage point of expansion in each of the next three years. I think they're sandbagging a bit. I think they can do a lot better than that. I think this is getting added to our small-ish cap dollar cost average stocks in 2024 after taking a smaller position for the first time this past year. Number five, another wonderful shoe company, Crocs. In recent quarters, Crocs has really been raked over the coals with its acquisition of Hey Dudes and the very little growth that we saw from that brand. But we think that it still has a lot of potential. This is, we believe, another right-sizing of operations story. As you just mentioned, Hey Dude, when it was acquired over a year ago, was very, very high growth. And that growth has basically gone to nil. But we think just for the time being, they're closing down non-strategic accounts. They're helping some of their retail partners burn off excess inventory. But we think starting in 2024, the Hey Dude brand will return to growth at some point. And along the way, Crocs actually still very much a growth story this past year, in spite of a global consumer that's come under pressure from inflation, some pairing back of non-consumer discretionary. And along the way, we think the Crocs brand specifically will continue to be a bit more pedestrian growth business, but a highly profitable one. Most foam clogs have an army of fans and finding a bunch of new customers over in East Asia, which is really still at this point, a mostly untapped market for Crocs. As we've outlined in videos in the past, we think markets in Asia are a perfect fit for Crocs. So another shoe brand that we really like to start off 2024, we think the stock is not reflecting the company's full potential over the next three to five years. That's our bet. Number six is Livent. This company is merging with Alchem, an Australian-based company. This merger is planned to be completed by January 4th. So if you're watching this after this first week of January, it's probably finished. And the company is now called Arcadium, which will be trading under ticker symbol Alt-M, A-L-T-M. We did a recent video on the lithium refining market a couple of weeks ago, a link to that video here. After the merger is complete, though, on January 4th, we'll be working on a deeper dive on this new business that will emerge from this tie up between Livent and Alchem. But the basic premise here is that Livent is a top lithium refiner, Alchem is a fast growing lithium producer. And so combining the two kind of makes this more vertically integrated and a theoretically even more efficient business, becoming a bit more like industry leader Albemarle, ticker symbol ALB. Albemarle is our top lithium stock holding, but we kind of like the story that's unfolding here with Livent slash Arcadium Lithium. So we'll have more to say about this because we this is the one that we plan to add to as 2024 gets rolling. Again, we think Not a lot of track record here, but we think there's potential for more consistent profit margins going forward. And of course, this is a highly cyclical business as mining operations tend to be. So after a really ugly 2023, we think the lithium market will have a nice bounce back year in 2024. Again, stay tuned for more details on that in the coming weeks. Small cap companies have been heating up and we really think that could continue in 2024 Number seven, shift for payments, ticker symbol four or F-O-U-R. Another niche play, the company got its start focusing on the North American hospitality industry with its digital payments acceptance, point of sale systems, and software services. But the company recently finished up some acquisitions that will now take that platform over into Europe. The company thinks there's lots of opportunity for them to grow their platform in these places like hotels, motels, restaurants, and such. In addition to that, they've also been moving up market in North America, landing lots of new deals with big entertainment venues. So a nice extensible industry for the platform that they've already built. So we think this is one of those companies that really has done a great job dominating its niche 
and now very slowly extending out from there while still kind of staying focused on what it does best. As we've talked about before, that is providing low-cost digital payments acceptance services for its customers. Really a winning strategy because in 2023, a lot of digital payment stocks got hit on this worry that profit margins were going to come under pressure as a lot of these platforms start to compete with each other a lot more. But we like Shift 4's position, already an established track record of turning a profit. And we think those profit margins will continue to expand in the year ahead as they start to convert some of their prospective customers into actual paying customers in the hospitality space. There you have it. There is our top seven non-chip stocks for 2024. These aren't necessarily in order of importance, but they were in order of market cap for our portfolio. We know that many of you have your own list for 2024, so please hit us up in the comments. Let us know which companies are your top picks and why. This is, of course, going to be our last video of 2023. So when we uh, fire up the cameras again next week, we're going to have just one more high level video for you. We're going to recap 2023 stocks that we sold and stocks that we still hold for 2024. Hopefully that's helpful because again, we know many of you are looking for our full portfolio. We do in a roundabout way tell you what that is, but we wanna stimulate some discussion around that. So again, stocks we sold in 2023, stocks we still hold for 2024. And then we'll get into more deep dives on the semiconductor industry after that. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. We post lots of material on our community board as well. So if you hit the bell, you'll get notified of those. And again, like Casey mentioned, we do have our semiconductor industry flow manual for 2024, a deep dive on how the semiconductor industry works, how the different various businesses throughout that supply chain interact with each other. And we talk about some of our favorite sub industries within the world of semiconductors, our favorite picks for the long term and why. Again, you can find the link to that below in our shop in Kofi. Just five bucks for that manual. We've gotten some good feedback on it. We think you'll like it. Thank you again for being our subscribers, our viewers for this last year that we've had our channel. We really appreciate it. If you like our content, consider hitting that super thanks button or joining our membership for just a small amount each month. That just helps support our work and keeps us cranking out these videos. We really appreciate all of your help. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in 2024.